Um, so for those of you who are just meeting me, a little bit about my story from last year too. The songs I did last year, I don't sound anything like it did this year. Okay, good well, So that's the right one. Okay. Yeah, you're good, but I've already started something else. So, just, you know. so um, yeah, so I was born into a family influenced by alcohol, but my family also knew the Lord. Um, when I was going into high school, we moved, and at that point, I, they began to brutally make fun of me in school. So much so that at the senior music banquet, there was a whole table of seniors who booed me when I won the music award. And see, I knew by the time I was 10, I was called to sing. And they told me I could never do it. But you know, when the enemy knows that the Lord is on you to do something, he is all about taking you out anyway he can, right? And so by that time, as a senior in high school, I had learned Italian from my high school teacher and had gone and auditioned for a fellowship, won the fellowship, participate in ensembles as a sign. This was before there was any Christian, contemporary Christian music track. And um, so I get this scholarship and I go to school and everybody likes me for who I am. I'm having a good time. I'm finally figuring out life is... You know, I'm, I'm getting into my element, and there's this guy. And I was like, I don't want to see anybody. I don't want to know anybody. I'm having a good time. I've had enough. I dated guys in high school. Because I was always about ministry, man. That's just where it was going. And um, so he decided that that just wasn't a good thing, and he was going to seek me. And he did, and I said, like, you wore me down, dude. He was the most popular guy on campus, which really didn't, it, it was just a little, a little bit amazing to me, but it wasn't, I, I, I really liked him, he was a great guy. And two weeks after we started dating, he was killed in a motorcycle accident. And I spent a year in, in just figuring out, it wasn't myself. At the end of that year or so, I met who was gonna be my future husband. He made a vow to the Lord not to date anybody the first semester he was back in school. So, also during that time, there was no contemporary Christian music track. So, my choice was classical. And not only that, my choice had to be vocal performance because when the Lord calls you, He calls you to do the best you can. And so, in order to graduate, and mind you, my professors were telling me, you don't do this classical, this, this contemporary stuff. You just put that stuff aside. And I was like, yeah, big stuff. And I had to make a choice because it was so consuming to do vocal or instrumental. I chose vocal because I just couldn't spend that much time in the studio. And I graduated, um, well, I got three years into my education. And at the end of the third year, my professors, you had, to, you had to go in front of them and test to go to the next level. And you had to do, be able to do certain things vocally. And I went in and they looked at me. And I mean, you're talking about a really tense situation. You've got five judges sitting there that are going to tell you how well you're doing, what you're supposed to be doing, and whether or not you did it well enough to get to the next level where you need to go in order to graduate. At the end of the third year, they looked at me and said, we've done everything for you that we can. You've got something wrong with your voice. You not, might need surgery, and we can't do anything for you. <sighs> Called my parents in tears. I just finished my junior year of college. My dad and mom came down, surprised them. Thanks, mom and dad. And um, they said they would get back to my dad with some information to help me. They never called. My dad called the Louisville Seminary. At that time, music therapy was brand new. And what we didn't know was one of the foremost in the world was there at the seminary. And so my dad called and said, will you take her on? Will you figure out what's going on? And Dr. Heron took me on, and I basically did about six months of vocal therapy work in about two months while I was planning my wedding and working my first job. 
And um, so it all worked. God was good. I went back to school in the fall. My former professor had returned. He had gone away. Because the first year, I was going to vocal competitions. I was way behind. But by the end of the third year, I was like, nowhere, you know. And so um, he came back and he said, you are so far behind. He said, I don't know if you're ever going to graduate with the degree you want. He said, I'm not saying that it will never happen. But he said, I'm telling you, you are so far. He said, we're just going to keep putting one foot in front of the other. I'm good with that. I was just, because my attitude was, look, God called me to do this. This is where I'm going. I'm not looking to the left or to the right. This is why identity is the thing that I minister on the most when I go and preach and teach. Because when God calls you and he said, that's where you're going, that's where you go. Now, you may go, and believe me, I did, but he's got a purpose. And if you know what that is, it doesn't matter what the enemy is going to throw at you, right? And so um, uh, in the spring of my fifth year, they came to me and they said, they said, um, uh, well, I got complete and total laryngitis. I was at the best I'd ever been in my vocal condition. And a month before my senior recital, whoosh, nothing. I had made dramatic progress. Everything stopped. I took, I was conducting the Baptist Student Union Choir and took them on the road and my pianist went with me so that I could try to begin working to get my voice back. And um, didn't do it as pretty as I would have liked, but I did it, and I got it. And I was the first music major to go for the presidential paper, passed it. Two days later, got a phone call, and they said, you're not going to get that medal at the recital because you did B work, and we don't give the medal to B work. I said, where did the B come from? So I called my professor, and basically I nailed him to the wall. He was not there when I needed him, and then decided I didn't do good enough, then gave me enough to disqualify me, but I broke, broke the wall. The next year, people came behind me and got it, you know? And that was hard. But the day I graduated, my mom looked at me and she said, honey, you can sing any song, any new song you want. And I was like, thank you, Jesus. So, you know, you don't, if God calls you to do something, he's going to equip you to do it. You might have to work, and you're going to have to stand Satan down because the more anointing there is, the more true you are to that calling, the harder it can be, right? So I minister a lot on identity, but it was a couple of years later after that, and by that time I was married. Um, and then let me just tell you, I'm just, I don't know who this is for, but I'm going to tell you. I usually don't do this much talking about it because I just like to sing and let the song speak. But I had married my husband. And it was in the fall right after we got married, about three months. And my professor was so scared about me being in front of these people and doing what I needed to do that he said, I want you to go home every night. And he said, I want you to think through every song that you're singing. This wasn't music education. This was vocal performance. That meant German, Italian, French, a song cycle, and a couple of arias. And he said... I want you to think through every single note every night. Well, about November, I was just wiped out. By that time, I was so wiped out. And one night I went to bed, and I used to do it before I go to bed at night. And I flipped off the light and didn't do it. My husband was a resident hall director, so he could stay up late. He's in the other room watching TV, and he goes, Hey, you didn't do your music. I said, I'm just so tired. God love him. I love him, man. Okay. Next thing I know, flipping that light, hauled me up by underneath both of my armpits, sat me down in the middle of the waterbed, which is doing this, and slaps my book on my lap and says, do it. I did it. And I didn't look back after that. It wasn't easy. After, I, after we moved to Chicago, the Lord then connected me with someone who was a Juilliard graduate, and I was able to study with him some more, and went to Africa three times. But here's where it really gets funny. You never know the things God is going to use. 
I am now substitute teaching in a rural area in a high school. I've got 16 and 17 year old boys. They love music. I mean, if you wanted to start a music, that would be the place to go, right? And these are good old country boys too, right? I mean, these are good old boys. They know how to fix the motor. And I mean, they, right? And they will look at me and I'll go in because they know who I am and they'll say, Mrs. Westerfield, will you sing for us? And I'll say, if you do what you're supposed to and if you remind me when we get to the end of class. And then we get to the end and they so the, I'll say, what would you like me to sing for you? I don't get it. Will you do opera? You want me to do what? <laughs> Will you do your German opera? Okay, I'll do German opera. But because of that, you know, I don't know where God's going to take all this, but I now sing songs in about six or seven different languages. He'll say, do you speak it? And I'm like, not a word. <laughs> don't know what I'm saying. But I could have never foreseen that at 58 years old, I was going to be substitute teaching in a high school with 16 and 17-year-old boys wanting to hear German opera who are rural and farm boys. Only God. Yeah. Only God, you know. So anyway, be encouraged. And I tell you that because there were so many twists and turns. Identity is my heart because I had to come out of that stuff. And I did a lot of work. I allowed the Lord to do a lot of work on me in the process. And um, it's just, you know, unexpected things are going to happen. And the enemy is going to try to derail you. But I said this last year, and I will say it again. The number one thing I've seen more artists destroyed by and derailed by is identity issues. Because you get caught up in the glory of the world when you don't know the glory of the Lord. Time and time again. Time and time again. People get addicted and die because they don't know who they are. Right? If I understand that I'm precious and I'm loved by Jesus and I can, the Lord knows I can make some mistakes, then, you know, if I can accept that because it's all about him and not about me, then it's going to be all right. And I know that I'm precious and I'm loved. And you know what? The other big benefit, it's okay to be wrong. You know? More often than not, it's not Jesus that beats us up when we're wrong. It's the people around us. Truth? Truth. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I'll tell you more about the second song we're going to do. Robbie's going to come and join me for that one. But okay, Brandon. All right. All right. That was more than what I meant to say, but that was for somebody. So, so have some fun. Get ready to dance, okay? Maybe for the first one and the last one, okay? Mr. Baby, who 
sent a text and I said, Robert, I'm singing in Gatlinburg and I'm doing the Battle Hymn of the Republic and would you like to play for me? And he came back to me and he said, hey, he said, yeah, I would love to do that. And I was like, I knew you were the right one. So we've had very little practice time. We're going to wing it. <laughs> you know, but I have confidence in Robert Simmons. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. He is trampling out the vintage where the grapes of wrath are stored. 
He hath loosed the fateful lightning of his terrible swift sword. His truth is marching Amen. Now listen to this. I have read the fiery gospel writ with burnished row rows of steel as he deals with my condemners so with you his grace will deal oh jesus born of woman has crushed serpent with his heel and his truth is marching on sing with me Show them grace and don't do it. I told you so. Right? That's the time to show grace. As he deals with your condemners, let his grace deal with them through you. It's the kindness of God that brings people to repentance. Right? Doesn't mean you're going to let them walk all over you. It is going to get uncomfortable. But it's okay because that's what redemption looks like. I mean, is it not true that when an addict or someone comes to know the Lord, they got a lot of stuff to walk through? Amen. Right? And our country is going through that right now. But here's the kicker. The Lord says, I'm with you in this, and it is well with your soul. Amen. It is well. Whatever happens, it is well. Is that the second That's one? That's the second one. Oh. Mm. Yep.